Hello and welcome. Um, so here are three leaves, their kit for the month of September. And it had very mixed reviews when it first came out. A lot of people were dissatisfied with what it is. It's one of these peekaboo um, sets, which I can see on, on the surface, you know, your first reaction be like, oh, it's kind of, you know, weird. It's very Halloween-y, apothecary feeling. Um, but this, I had this idea that popped in my head as soon as I saw it. And this, this, I've already made one. It's to use the peekaboo die to make a haunted cabinet. Now, the ghosts do not come in this kit, but I already had the set, and it's been my favorite set from this Halloween. It's by Mama Elephant. I can put a piece of white piece of paper under here so you can see. It's just a series of ghosts. It's called Little Boo Agenda. Um, I don't know. It's been my favorite set for this Halloween. If you remember, I already made a card with it once. Here's the card I made with it. If you haven't seen it, there's a video. You can check it out where when you open the card, a little ghost pops up. And it's just been a lot of a lot of fun. So um, I already had this out, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to do this. So I, uh, I'm going to show you how I did it because there's a couple little tricks I learned along the way. Um, the doors open up, and as you open it up, you can see all the little ghosts doing ghosty things. Oops, I can't pick this one up. Ah, all right, there you go. Try to open these up as much as possible and see all the cute things that they're doing. So, and I was like, well, so then I had the thought, I have these other agenda sets for Mama Elephant. There's a monkey set, there's a panda set. There's a bunch of other stuff now. So my my mind's been kind of going, well, I wonder what other things I can hide inside these drawers to kind of like expose this hidden world. So I don't know. I'll keep thinking about it because I don't have a real solid idea yet. But it um, certainly has intrigued me to see what other things I can come up with. Hopefully you can see all those little hidden ghosts in there. And I'll show you how I did this. It's a lot easier than um, I thought. But there are a few little tricks I've learned along the way. So. Let me set this card aside and I'm going to set the stamp set aside. I've already done a little bit of prep work just to, you know, save some time on camera here. I stamped the die and die cut to the windows, but I'm not going to fold these up yet because I want to, I want to sponge on this first. One of the things I can say though that um, I learned was it's easier to die cut first, at least was for me, and then to stamp on top than it was to do it the other way around. I did it both ways, but I found it easier to do the die cutting first from the die and then do the stamping because I could see where the lines, the cut lines were, and it was easier to center. So one of the first things I wanna do is take one of my life-changing brushes and some black ink, and I'm going to make my cabinet a little bit more spooky. I stamped this on a really, really light shade of light gray. I can link it below. It's one of my favorite shades of gray. It's called Tim Pale. It's by uh, Spellbinders. And let me hold it up next to white and see if you can see the difference. Put it on the side. I haven't sponged yet, but it is it is actually gray. But when it just look at it by yourself itself, it's you know, it's easily mistaken as white. But when you can see, yep. So it's actually a little gray. But I thought that kind of added to the Halloween spooky. I'm going to leave the center of this lighter. I'm kind of trying to go in for that, I don't know, that vignette. The go the One of the ghosts is going to sit right here, so it kind of draws your attention, makes your eye kind of come in together and looking at that one spot. So I'm going to go for that. I debated long and hard about using my colored pencils to color in some of these handles and stuff, and I was like, you know what, I really think that just distracts, so I decided not to, but... Maybe you can tell me if you think I should have. Let me just, there we go. So I brought that in a little bit more. Darken up this corner a little bit. Seems to be a little lighter than the rest. All right, so now we have our front panel done so we can set this aside. And all I used was black ink and a life changer brush to do that. All right, and then I am going to, you can look at my little ghosts. I have them all cut out and colored for you. Um, I used very traditional Halloween colors. I didn't do anything too fancy. Um, 
there is a coordinating die that comes with this, which probably would have been a little helpful, but I really don't like the white outline the coordinating dies leave, and I don't mind fussy cutting, so I just fussy cut these out. I think I picked out to use all but one of the ghosts that came in the set, and the one I didn't use was this one here, which was a balloon, and I was like, I don't know, it just felt very birthday to me. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our glue and I'm going to push all these off my black paper. And this is one of the things that is super important when you do this. You are only going to put glue on the outer border here. So we're only going to put glue on the outer four sides. And then I'm going to glue this to a black panel. And this is going to be the backdrop for our card, or like the inside world that we're looking into. And the reason is, is that these ghosts are, let me show you on the original card, are just bigger than a lot of these spaces in here. So I had to tuck the ghosts in on several little spots to make them work inside the spaces here. Like this one's kind of flying up and I actually like the look because it looks like there's this continuous world back there and it's not just these individual compartments. I, to me, I like that look. I guess you could look at it different ways, but we're gonna have to um, do a little finagling. Now I'm gonna take and start bending these pieces up Now I thought one of the things I have that made this job just a smidgen easier is a pair of tweezers. These are actually from Cuddlebug. They're so old that the little soft cushiony things have fallen off the sides, but you know what, they still work. And when I originally designed this card, I laid all the ghosts out on top of where I wanted them to go before I, I glue them. Um, I'm not going to do that this time because I don't want to waste your time and I, I'm going to just do it the same as I did the other one. But what I did was I put glue on the back of each of the ghosts and then I worked them in. What I found works the best is if I pick the paper up because paper bends a little bit and as if I bend the paper, I'm able to finagle and lift and twist and whatnot the little elements inside so I can stick the little ghost in here. Now let's find the one with the candle. And like I said, I figured this all out once. I'm just, I'm just going with it. I like the layout that I have so I'm not going to stress too much. Um, if you come up with an alternate layout, gosh, please let me know. Um, I'm sure I could come up with another one. I just, I, I was, you know, why don't fix what's not broke. Is that the saying? Okay. So one of the, um, things that I've, I did with design is I really wanted to make sure that none of the bars or, um, dividers were, were in the middle of their face. And I was trying to tell a little bit of a story. So it wasn't just like they were randomly stuck back here. For example, I have this little girl ghost kind of flying this way. And then I'm going to put the little boy ghost with the cute little top hat kind of flying up to greet her. And again, it's just a lot of finagling those bending, twisting. <clears throat> so now we've got these two little lovey ghosts coming up to say hello. Um, we've got this little ghost here reading his book. And I'm going to take the little mummy ghost, put glue on the back of him, and then I put him up in the cart compartment, but I sit him to the side because then I can stamp boo next to him. There is a boo that comes in the hero art set, and there's also a boo that comes in the mama elephant set, and they both fit in there. The other thing that I had to take into consideration when picking out where they went was the size. The Which ghost was the biggest? So I tried to, and she was going this way, so I tried to make them so they were kind of flying in towards the center of the card. 
So that was part of it. So that determined it. And also based on size, where they went. We have this guy up here who's giving away candy. Go on this top section. Put him down a little bit. So he looks like he's kind of flying up that way. And there's a candy stamp that comes into the, in the mama elephant. And I'm going to stamp some of those around here. So it looks like he's been flying around throwing candy at his friends. And sticking with the candy theme, like he just got a sucker from his friend. He's kind of flying over here. <clears throat> and maybe this guy here got this little, you could call it a lollipop or maybe star balloon, I'm not sure. You can go up here at the top. This is harder to do when you can't. <clears throat> get over it. I apologize. I've been getting over a cold. I feel much better now, but I still got the remnants of it. So I apologize. I'm using my sexy voice today. Let's see. And I do recommend using a wet glue so you can slide your ghost around in the background a little bit. Now notice I do have one ghost left, but he's going to go on the outside and I kind of like wanted the recipient to to have some indication of what was on the inside because if you leave this just plain, it's just, I think, too plain. So I thought booyah and then as you open it up, you see all the boos. So how fun. Anyway, all right, so now let's take um, a small block and some white ink and I, you know, there's a couple different ways of doing this. You could get real fancy. You could heat embossies you could do I don't know and I was like you know what I'm colored pencil shows up on black cardstock really well and so does white ink so I thought how fun and one thing I did learn with this is you need to make sure that you fold the door all the way back or the stamp can't get to the paper very well and it, it leaves a, a weird impression so you have to kind of fight with the doors just a smidgen so there we go, and I'm going to put a couple pieces of candy in this. It's kind of like that ghost up there is dripping candy here. I'm going to put some more. They say dripping. I meant dropping. You know, I hate when I drip candy. the boo from the mama elephant and the boo from the hero arts are almost identical so it doesn't really matter what you use and another reminder is that this is hero arts unicorn ink i love this ink best white ink ever but it does stay wet for a minute so make sure you're not touching or rubbing anything or you're going to end up with smear marks so let's see where else we can add let's add a boo down here Add a boo in here. Oh, I missed that a little bit. Let's see. Ah! So I messed that up a little bit. So take your, if you ever do this, take your fingers and rub. Pigment ink stays wet, so I can kind of smudge that out of there. <clears throat> it will not be perfect, but that's okay. And I'm just wiped it up. Most of it is out of there. So now I can come back in and re-stamp and look. It has a smidgen of little white halo around it, but no one's going to know. Don't tell anybody, okay? No one's supposed to know. So there's a little boo. Oh, we got to put a boo in here. The hardest part is fighting with the little doors. Okay, so I think we're all done with the white ink. I guess we'll just check. Let's make sure we don't have any other 
no obvious white space to fill up. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take, this is just a standard card base. And let's add our panel to that. And then I think I'm going to take this guy here. And maybe what I'll do is take my scissors. So I stamped out the sentiment Booyah, which comes in the Mama Elephant set. And I'm just going to trim this down real small. You could be all fancy and make a sentiment banner and dovetail it. I'm going for real simple here. And I'm going to just put glue on the top of this ghost in case he hangs off a little bit. I don't want his top hat. So when you place this on here, if the top hat goes above the line, then the door won't open. So I didn't want that to happen. So I'd rather have the tail of the ghost kind of hanging off. And I'm going to do the same for the booyah. So I'm going to add it to the side that has the ya. and let the boo part hang off this cabinet door. So there we go. And once that dries, that'll be permanent. So let's give this a second to dry and then I'll, I'll come back. So I'm gonna come back in like five minutes. Okay, so I'm still gonna let the insides of this or the, the white pigment ink dry a little bit because I really don't wanna smear it. But I thought while that's doing that, let's add a little something something to the inside of this card. So I'm going to use Cure Arts Intensified Black Ink. These little cubes came in a uh, a kit a while ago. And I was just testing it out because I've never used it before. So I mean it's very, it is very dark. It's pretty awesome. Now I'm afraid to get my card in that. Here let's put this. Does anyone else do this stuff? There we go. Now the card's protected. So I'm going to stamp the Happy Halloween in the center of the card. And I thought, let's stamp a couple ghosts on the inside. I, I am partial to this little one with the pumpkin, so I'm going to do that. He is like my favorite. So let's have him kind of popping up. And just because it's fun over here. Oops, she didn't stamp perfectly, which is my fault. You should probably do this in a misty, and normally I would. I'm just kind of having fun playing around here a little bit. So sometimes I think you know we're so we get so focused on everything being perfect and just forget to have fun. So then we'll have him kind of drop in some more candy there. So I thought that was kind of just a neat way to pull the card all together. So let's put this away. So now let's go on to the inside of this card. And I picked out some very vibrant colors. These three are actually called neon and they're from Prismacolor. They didn't have a neon red though. And I'm not sure I'm going to use it, but I pulled it out because they rather have the option than, than not. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of color to some of these candies. All right, so I think I didn't use red at all. I just used the orange, green, and yellow. So here we go. Here is our front of the card. Pretty, and by the way, this does, if you're curious, it does fit in a A2 card perfectly. And you can train these doors. They will lay flat. You can open them up. They stay open. They're, they're pretty, pretty awesome. So when the recipient gets it and it's been in the envelope, these will stay pretty down, I think. And then when they pull it out of the envelope, it'll look pretty awesome. And then when you open it up, you have Happy Halloween. And you know what? I'm... All right, very cool. So I think that is our finished Halloween card. I hope you um, are excited about this idea as I am. I really, really like how this turned out. thought this was such a cool use of this die. Um, there, are, I've seen some several really cool ideas that have come out with the focus more on the stamps that came in the kit. Um, you know, like I said, I wasn't really super excited about 
that style of stamp, but this die and this frame, oh my God, I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. I just, I'm like, my mind's racing with what other ideas can I stick behind this in this uh, box of drawers or I don't know what else. Uh, yeah. My mind is racing with ideas of what to stick behind this panel. So um, tell me what you think. I'd love to hear about it. Um, I, I, as far as I know, there are kits available. So if you haven't got a kit or you opted out of this month, feel free to go pick one up. I'll put the link below. Um, if you click on that link, it really does help me um, continue to make videos. So I appreciate that. Um, thank you so much. And I hope to see you guys again soon.